Yeah, I think I'm just going to be repetitive and disorderly, Matt, as uh, John Burko was just saying. In fact, that's a metaphor, isn't it, for the whole of Brexit, repetitive and disorderly. But perhaps, perhaps the Prime Minister can grasp back control of this whole process where he has failed to do so so far, where his predecessor, Theresa May, may failed to do so. Because, let's face it, he's had a couple of defeats. One, they walked away uh, from their meaningful vote on Saturday, which was perhaps a tactical error because it meant, uh, according to John Burko, that they couldn't have another crack at the same um, withdrawal agreement, meaningful vote, yesterday, because uh, under the laws and Erskine May and what have you of the, of the land, uh, it was repetitive and disorderly. So he's having to go a longer, more elongated route to get his approval uh, for his Brexit deal. So what's going to happen today? Well, there are two key votes late on here in Westminster today. One is the second reading of the withdrawal agreement bill, which we saw published yesterday, 110 pages long, with 125 pages of notes attached to it, explanatory notes attached to it, although no economic impact analysis, uh, which is something that Sajid Javid uh, was hauled over the coals with yesterday. He's the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer. So we're going to have uh, scrutiny throughout the day today and debate, and then there'll be two key votes later on, both of which the Prime Minister has to win if he's got any hope at all of getting his Brexit, which he's desperate to do by October 31st before potentially the EU enacts an extension because of course that is in their power now. So first he's got to win uh, the withdrawal agreement second reading vote uh, and secondly he's got to get agreed uh, an accelerated timetable, a programme motion. Let's hear about that programme motion from Jacob Rees-Mogg, the Leader of the House. People who don't vote for the programme motion will be voting not to have Brexit on the 31st of October, and they will need to understand that clearly, and they won't be able to persuade one set of people that they voted for the second reading and therefore in favour, and another set that they voted against the timetable uh, and were against. That won't work. I mean, it's quick. I mean, they'll get three hours of debate today, potentially 12 hours of debate tomorrow, Wednesday, six hours of debate on Thursday. Then that's it for the Commons if Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, and Boris Johnson get their way. As you can imagine, the opposition is up in arms about this, including the leader uh, of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. Listen in. If the Prime Minister wants to get his deal through, he should bring forward the Withdrawal Agreement Bill for scrutiny. Will he also and will he also bring forward an economic impact assessment? Ah, yes, that would be good. Which has since has so far not seen the light of day. And will he allow this House ample time to scrutinise what this deal means to the communities that we all represent? So that's Jeremy Corbyn just mentioned what I said about the economic assessment as well. So three ways they could add amendments to it to thwart the government. This is the opposition over the next couple of days. One, they could try and attach a customs union amendment to it. Two, a second referendum, a confirmatory referendum attachment to it as well. And third, take away the government's ability to basically end the talks uh, after the transition period, which ends in December 2020, so that we don't de facto fall out uh, of the EU without a free trade agreement in place. And hence it would be become a harder Brexit. But as uh, the speaker says, Matt, and I'll hand it back to you, it's all become rather repetitive and disorderly. Back to you. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.